I'm Sarah Cody here with head coach Tom Poitras, where tonight on this field, the Hawks will take on Quinnipiac and look to make it four straight wins in a row. Now, coming off a big one nothing overtime win at Siena, um, the Hawks are 2-0 and in overtime this year, and all eight of your games have been decided by a single goal. How does this help the team's maturity? Hartford is a very young squad, so has this helped at all? You know, it's a big, I mean, it's a confidence boost for the guys when we can keep pulling out a couple of the overtime wins, but more importantly, it shows the determination and the grit and the perseverance the team has not to give up when it gets a little tough or not to concede a goal in overtime. So it, they're managing the situations well, and they're really doing a good job for a young group playing with a lot of determination. Now, as a coach playing in these one goal type situations, um, especially in overtime going down the stretch, does your coaching mentality change after 90 minutes? No, we, we try and tell our guys, look, you know, obviously be, con, you know, conservative in our own half of the field, but at the same time, we still want them to take risks. We still want them to push forward. Um, we want to, you know, we, we're trying to encourage our guys to go for the wins in those situations. We're not telling them, like, a tie is okay. You know, we're encouraging them, hey, take chances, go for the win, push forward, and see if we can catch the goal. We know we've got some attacking players that can score goals, and, and we get some really good leadership in the back as well. Damian Lowe's been really good for us, and obviously with Giovanni Sims and Anthony Santaga, um, going Going forward, we always have a chance to get a goal. Now, as I mentioned, the Hawks are coming off a three-game win streak with wins over Penn, UMass, and Siena. You're now entering a two-game homestand against two in-state opponents to wrap up conference play. How important is this mo is this momentum? Well, it's huge because I mean, obviously, like you said, we're getting ready to go into the conference part of the season. You know, in another week or so, um, we, you know, one of our goals in in the beginning of the season is to do well against all the in-state rivals. We want to be, you know. Uh, competing and doing well against those guys because it's a local game so it's kind of a rivalry and, and Quinnipiac and then Sacred Heart later in the week but also we want to be prepared and we want to keep momentum moving forward into the conference because obviously we open up with BU which is a big starting game in the league but at the same time we still want to take care of this week and make sure we keep the momentum keep playing well keep getting better and, and keep our, um, the exciting you know home games going and our fans have been great and we want to keep that momentum going too. Now, as you can tell, standing here on Almar Zook Field, it's a little bit windy today. Game time is in about seven hours. Um, how does the wind factor into a game? Well, you know, it's definitely a factor, but I mean, the one thing about the wind is, is you're not going to play as many balls in the air and, and you're going to try and keep the ball on the ground and play balls to people's feet, which is actually good for us because we're trying to keep the ball low anyway and play as quick as we can on the ground. So it'll actually make us do that. It'll force us to do that a little more, which will be good. But obviously the wind always plays a factor. Hopefully it'll be, a, you know, for the reports I saw, it's supposed to die down a bit for uh, tonight. The past three and a half games, you've been without David Bernardson. You're without him the rest of the season. How have you adapted um, to playing without David on the field? Well, you know, it's a process. The guys are learning right now. It's, you know, they, obviously it was a disappointing, you know, a couple a week, two weeks ago when we were at Penn and we, we got the news that, uh, you know, he had his injury. But at the same time, it happens in sports all the time. And the guys know that, you know, we need to push forward and other guys have to step up. And then the good thing about it is, you know, guys have to take the opportunity and, and come out and do a little bit better and do a little more and help the team so other guys have stepped up and you know there's been some really good performances from guys who maybe weren't the key guys and now they're putting a little more of a bigger role. So you have Quinnipiac entering Elmer Zook Field tonight with the 2-3-0 mark. Philip Surprise has scored four of the team's seven goals. How do you plan on containing him and the rest of the Bobcats? Well, you know, the ironic part with Philip is, you know, we recruited him when I was in Green Bay because he's from Milwaukee. So we know Philip really well, um, know him, his family uh, through the recruiting process. His father's a high school coach in uh, Wisconsin, so we know them really well. Philip's a very, very good player. He's very talented with both feet. He can score goals. So we've just got to make sure when he gets in the attacking half of the field that we account for him and we know where he's at. That, um, and we don't lose track of them because that obviously could cause us problems. But, you know, Quinnipiac last year beat us and they scored four goals against us. So we know we've got to tighten up on the defensive side of things. And that's something we've been getting better and better at the last couple of weeks. So we plan on hoping to continue to improve that tonight. And, and hopefully it gives us a good result. And that was head coach Tom Poitras. Stay tuned to HartfordHawks.com all access as the Hawks take on the Quinnipiac Bobcats.